and welcome. This is the first in an occasional series I'll be doing on Scottish country dancing technique. Um, I decided to start this series because there really isn't anything out there that I could find, at least on YouTube, that has to do with Scottish country dancing and is geared towards practicing at home. So, um, a little bit about my experience. I started doing Scottish country dance about six years ago. I spent a year studying at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. Um, on a scholarship and I wanted to make some friends and I've been dancing all my life so I started going to the local Scottish country dance group and got hooked and started going to classes a couple times a week and dances on the weekends and haven't really looked back so I've been teaching for about two years now and I just wanted to share a little of that knowledge with you all. Um, a few of the little basics about Scottish country dancing. This is athletic and physically challenging. Make sure you're in a position to take that on. Uh, make sure you're wearing comfortable clothing. Ladies often wear skirts and tops or dresses. Men, kilts or comfortable shorts, slacks. Jeans, probably not. Um, as for footwear, when you're just starting out, any comfortable athletic shoe is fine. Uh, women typically wear ballet shoes like I've got or uh, pumps, which are basically full-soled ballet slippers. Um, you can also see um, many men and women wear ghillies, which have these crisscross lacings all the way along the top. There's a lot of ways to lace these, and a lot of people prefer them to pumps. It's really a matter of personal preference and how much money you have to spend and where you're located. But uh, you want a shoe where your foot can flex freely. You're going to be pointing your toes and moving the arches of your feet a lot, so be aware of that. Um, make sure you warm up. Make sure you stretch out, especially your ankles and calves. Uh, nobody likes getting hurt. So, the first step we're going to go over is called the slip step. This is the step that you'll be using when you're traveling in a circle in Scottish country dancing. There's a lot of moves in Scottish country dancing where you take hands and you move around in a circle. So, first thing we need to focus on is our hands and arms. You want to have, obviously, you need good posture, you want your shoulders back, and your ears as far away from your shoulders as they can get. You want a nice high head. Um, your arms should look like W's. You should have a nice firm 90 degree angle and you want to be firm in your grip. You don't want spaghetti arms. You want to, it's called giving weight. You want to pull a little on the people next to you and make a centrifugal force so that as you move around your circle doesn't wobble, people don't trip up, and you can help each other stay mobile. So in this step all we're doing is we're in first position, our feet are turned out at a nice angle. This is universal truth in Scottish country dancing. You're going to be up on the balls of your feet, and all we're going to do is we're going to move around to the left, our heels coming together on each step, and then back to the right. This is something that you can practice just on your own. It's nice to have some people to hold hands with. And um, let's have a little bit of music, and we'll see what it looks like with the music. You can just imagine I have six of my closest friends, or seven, to help me. Obviously, you can have a little bit more abandon and move a little bit more briskly when you have more room, although you want to be controlled in this step. Scottish country dancing often looks very boisterous, but the way you can show off best is by having good control. So make sure you're able to stop in time to move back the other direction. Next step we're going to work on is skip change of step. And this is the traveling step for Scottish country dancing. In this step, again, we're starting in first position. Our angles of our legs is going to stay constant throughout as we step forward with the right foot, close behind with the left in third position so our heels touch our insteps. The right foot comes forward again, and with the left, we pull through. All of this time, during all of these movements, our toes should be pointed and our feet should not be dragging on the ground. So our left foot pulls through. We then step with the left, close, left, and pull through. The step continues like this. So let's have eight bars of music and we will see how this looks in motion. So obviously I'm limited in space and I made one very common dancing faux pas. In this step, our primary movement should always be upward. We spring into the step, and the step begins with a hop step 
close, step, ha, step, close, step. So don't do what I just did. Please do it correctly. Let's have eight more bars of music to show it the right way. how I raise up onto the balls of my feet as I begin and my feet end again in first position the angle remaining constant the motion remaining upwards as I'm on the balls of my feet my toes pointed at the floor so those are the first two basic steps next time we'll talk a little bit about Scottish country dancing history and talk about some more steps so until then